Thanks for checking out this week's FinPrep Trading and Investment video newsletter. All right, looking at the year-to-date, stocks continuing to push ahead. NASDAQ on top of the pile there, nearly 10% on the year, so very decent showing out of NASDAQ as consistent with that long-term sort of sideways consolidation and breakout at approximately the 120 level, as we discussed in last week's video. Um, note here, of course, Russell at the bottom, still anticipating a bit of catch-up, and we'll look at the chart there for that. U.S. government bonds marginally positive on the week, and more importantly, within the pattern of the price, we're looking at a wedge pattern, so essentially a sideways triangle. We'll look at the chart there and discuss the implications of that. Copper gave back somewhat this week, although continuing to maintain a pretty decent um, percentage price change on the year. Same story with precious metals so far holding up quite decently and posting slight gains. Currencies relatively flat, and we'll look at the Japanese yen in particular to um, understand sort of the price profile and potential implications for trend going forward. SPY, all right, S&P 500 tracking ETF did break out against that 420 high trend line, so whereas that it previously, previously capped numerous um, High of days, highs of week, etc., and even this last rally attempt back at the ending of 2016 did take it out so far on a weekly basis, which is positive to see. We'll see if it continues to hold, particularly against the 9 EMA rising. On the other hand, we are at extreme overbought levels, so um, being obviously mindful of that here. Um, Dow similarly took out the trend line, the short term trend line, which had previously held up price, as you can see quite evidently, and cap price rallying through here. And then with a breakout above this flat topped it around, yeah, around of resistance 200. Um, and now price having essentially closed above it. We'll see if it continues to hold. In terms of NASDAQ, NASDAQ continues to trend ahead powerfully along the 9 EMA more or less, having previously broken out again above that 120 and then the 122 resistance um, consolidated sideways above it and then rallied quite hard. So this is good. Positive action out of the queues here so far. The laggards, of course, being trannies, um, having done a bit of our head fakes and so forth. And looking really for a break above the 172 to join the party. Similarly with Russell's small caps, we do have more sideways consolidation, which is very healthy off this essentially vertically, um, you know, straight, just pull up off that 200 day moving average, moving sideways in time, not a horrible thing. Looking for an eventual breakout of 140 again to join the party as we have in terms of uh, QQQs in particular. Looking at U.S. government bond proxy DTF, long-term treasuries, 20 years, this is essentially was the wedge pattern. As reflected in the price, you know, we were just flipping around about point, plus point three percent um, on either side of uh, the zero sign, really on a year-to-date basis. And what we have here, as you can see, is lower, or higher lows, rather, and lower highs so far, basically. So drawing in the trend lines gives you a sideways triangle. From the longer-term picture, of course, um, we had this um, long-term upward price channel stretching back to at least 2011 on the TLT. Um, in any case, and um, yeah, really looking for potential basing action here. It's It's been obviously quite a chop in the sideways trend, so not the end of the world. On the other hand, this pattern does suggest a move, so just essentially measuring height from top to bottom in the wedge. It implies about a 6% or 6 point move rather on the TLT, so supposing we get a breakout around 20, that implies 126 to the upside and potentially down in the 113, 114, et cetera, on the TLT, um, which could, in, in fact, generate quite a more exaggerated move given that it would be a significant puncture of that long-term upward price channel, um, which could then be quite problematic from a TLT long perspective in any case. Um, so looking for an outsized move on the TLT, we'll just flip to copper actually for an analog, although this is quite something different. So technically con so a continuation pattern wedges, so meaning the move which preceded it move sideways in a triangle generally then begets a downward move, although you can see anything can happen. Um, and in either case, really similar story of if we measure the height here, essentially, it implies a target of around 30. And in fact, that's what we got, and which is um, part of the reason, quote unquote, why this was such a tremendous rally and just nonstop, if you may recall, as in the end of, what was it, last year? Yep. So ever since then, just again, last week in particular, pulling off hard, holding a 20, we'll see. I'm looking for a continued upward movement in copper, although it hasn't been, um, it's not the nice clean shot that it is as coming out of this wedge pattern, which is why we call it out on TLT. Dollar remains range bound, basically more or less going to chop within this 20 and 50 days. So um, we'll look at Euro chart there for perhaps a bit more clarity. GLD, GLD, notice here we have two lows of day last week along that trend line. And again, pulling an analog on the FX chart. FXI chart, the Chinese ETF, uh, or one of the Chinese stock um, ETFs, rather. Right. Um, it's even though at overbought conditions, so having previously bounced within this price channel, clearly, you know, optimal then <laughs> entry would be at the lower bound um, with risk of a potential hard break. On, on the other hand, you'll have the, the win in your sales, particularly at oversold levels. Nonetheless, overbought here, consolidated sideways along the top of the price channel, which was previously resistance, then become support and a very decent week off that. So 
looking for potential replay out of that on the GLD. We shall see if it comes to pass. In terms of silver, um, gold's cousin, as it were, more or less right on top of that 200-day moving average with resistance at the 200-week, very important long-term uh, moving average there. So looking for a potential breakout there, flipping to the gold miners, GDXJ. So again, kind of higher beta to that uh, GLD price, basically resistance at the 250-week moving average currently pulling in. Um, and then the daily chart kind of helps you see why it's capped out here um, a few weeks ago there. And here we are traveling along the 9 EMA and still above the 200 DMA. So more or less range bound action having previously broken out above this approximately 38 level. Looking for continued strength on GDXGL though, keeping an open mind as to um, any scenario which may unfold. Finally, FXY. Um, FXY did play out kind of as discussed last week where we did have continued sell off into that 50 DMA, held it as you can clearly see basically low of day here on Wednesday last week and then an unconvincing close on the week, very tight range and not a lot of movement on Friday. Um, so in the big picture of course, in terms of our very high correlation with the Chinese, uh, pardon, Japanese currency ETF, FXY and GLD um, uh, as a potential point where the beginning of year rally may look for a counter trend trade or may look to fade would potentially be again around that 200 declining 20 week moving average approximately 86 and a half currently and moving lower as we speak. So. Um, we'll want to keep an eye on that to see um, when the time has come to uh, move on, as it were, So, um, from our perspective anyways and for our purposes. So that essentially covers it for the week, guys. Thanks for hanging out and listening. Take care.